Good evening, everyone. So it's nice to have such a nice turnout tonight. So welcome. I'm James Herbert. For those that don't know me, I'm the president of the University of New England. And thank you all so much for joining us for the, the latest event in our President's Forum series. Um, so I'm going to make a few introductory remarks before I introduce our guests. It goes without saying that we live in hyper-polarized times. At the national level and increasingly at the local level, too, the animosity between entrenched ideological camps in our country manifests itself in many ways. We see how, the, we, we see how it manifests itself in our federal government and how it functions or, more precisely, fails to function. We see it in both traditional and social media, and we also all witness it in our daily lives. Where politics are concerned, the insults are many and serious conversations are few, unfortunately. And practically every issue today quickly becomes a political one. Consequently, instead of engaging in the hard conversations we should be having about the issues critical to our collective well-being, we either shout at each other across ideological divides or we avoid difficult topics altogether for fear of offending. In short, we're losing the art of civil discourse with those who think differently. Sadly, this phenomenon has also impacted higher education. Indeed, some argue that the academy itself has become a major source of the problem. After existing for generations as places where ideas, including controversial ideas, were discussed and debated in the pursuit of knowledge, many of today's universities have increasingly abdicated that sacred responsibility. At UNE, we are committed to doing our part to reverse this trend. We're committed to fostering robust discourse on difficult topics from a perspective of intellectual humility, curiosity, and civility. We pursue this goal through a variety of programs that together comprise our Marketplace of Ideas initiative. And one of these programs in that larger initiative is the President's Forum. Each President's Forum event consists of a moderated discussion that allows us to take a deep dive into a controversial topic from various angles. Along the way, we hope to model how to have productive discourse. Author Jonathan Rauch shares our belief in the value of conversations across differences. And in his groundbreaking book, The Constitution of Knowledge, A Defense of Truth, he argues that three things must be present for these types of productive conversations to take place. The first is a commitment to free and open discussion. The second is a commitment to viewpoint diversity. And the third is the establishment of clear ground rules around civility. The President's Forum intentionally incorporates all three of these elements. We will, we will apply these principles to tonight's discussion, which directs our attention to the rising number of people experiencing homelessness. We see our fellow citizens out and about in our communities. We see them standing at intersections asking for help. And increasingly, we see them camping in public places. Our hearts go out to them, but most of us don't know how to help, especially when we hear that some of them seem to refuse the shelter or social services that are offered to them. This is a growing problem in Maine and also across the United States, and it defies easy solutions. The numbers are truly staggering. The US Department of Urban Planning and Development reported in December that homelessness rose by more than 12% in 2023. This is the sharpest increase since the federal government began compiling these data in um, 2007. According to the same report, the number of people experiencing unsheltered homelessness in America rose to more than a quarter of a million. Here in Maine, the number of people experiencing homelessness rose to more than 4,200 in 2023, according to the state's annual point in time count. As we've watched this humanitarian crisis unfold, the issues have, predictably, become pol politicized. Voices on one side of the conversation have used the proliferation of encampments in cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York to criticize municipal leaders for, in their view, sanctioning unsheltered homelessness, encouraging lawlessness, and creating dangerous urban environments. At the, under, at the other end of the spectrum, we've heard voices portraying those in favor of enforcing or enacting laws to remove encampments as inhumane or heartless. It's our hope that tonight's conversation will present a more nuanced approach to this challenging social problem. Our guests all have strong views on how we should be confronting this crisis. 
but at the same time, they're committed to avoiding the sort of mudslinging that is too often um, mars today's public discourse. Among the points of contention, nationally and here in Maine, are ones involving such questions as, should we allow people experiencing homelessness to continue camping outdoors, and should we offer services on site? Or assuming that shelter beds are available, should we use force, including law enforcement if necessary, to move those who refuse to leave into shelters? And what about the reasons people cite for refusing to enter shelters? Are the rules in place at many shelters, such as curfews, ban bans on drugs, bans on pets, bans on couples sharing a bed, for example, are these rules counterproductive? Should low barrier approaches be adopted to make shelters more inviting? And if so, how far should we go in lowering the barriers? Should we allow open drug use, for example? Speaking of illicit drugs, there's no question that many, though certainly not all, people experiencing homelessness have serious substance use problems. How do we best manage this issue given the limited available resources and far from perfect efficacy of substance use, substance use interventions? And how do we balance the sometimes conflicting priorities of unhoused individuals with those of local residents and business owners? And if we do lower barriers and build enough beds to accommodate our neighbors experiencing homelessness, how do we event, prevent people from outside the state from gravitating here? Consider what's happening in, in municipalities like Portland, Oregon, that have enacted policies allowing, or some would say even encouraging, encampments. They become magnets for those experiencing homelessness from far away. I expect our panelists will venture into these and other waters tonight. But before I introduce them, I'd like to briefly recap the rules of engagement, if you will. Each speaker will have up to five minutes at the outset to summarize their perspective. Next, we'll move on to a moderated conversation and finally, we'll engage you, the audience, in a question and answer session with our experts. Um, I remind you that there should be no interrupting the speakers until that question and answer period. And when we do get to that, I, the expectation is that your questions will remain on topic and, of course, keeping with the spirit of the event, respectful. So now, let's meet our guests. First of all, Cullen Ryan is Executive Director of Community Housing of Maine, the largest supporting housing provider for homeless and special needs populations in the state. Cullen, thank you for coming. Um, yes. <laughs> Danielle West is the city manager of Portland, which operates the largest municipal shelter and one of a small number of municipal public health departments in the state. Danielle, thank you. <laughs> and, Ali Lovejoy is Vice President for Mission Advancement at Preble Street, a social work agency that has been serving the most vulnerable populations in Maine for nearly 50 years. So thank you, Ali, for joining us. Thank you all for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be here with us this evening. And joining our guests is UNE Assistant Clinical Professor of Public Health, Courtney Jeffers, who will serve as tonight's moderator. Thank you, Courtney, also. Um, in addition to expressing my heartfelt thanks to these four individuals, I'd also like to thank the many folks at UNE, students, faculty, professional staff, trustees for, for coming this evening. Um, and speaking of our amazing trustees, um, we have uh, many in the audience of our trustees who are with us tonight. Thank you, and I'd like to give a special thank you to UNE's newest trustee, our newest board member, former Portland Mayor Kate Snyder. Kate worked very hard to help us recruit the individuals um, for this event tonight and helping us just shape the event. So Kate, thank you very much for your help as well. And just a few other thanks. I wanna thank um, Ford and Karen Reiki, who couldn't be with us tonight, but they're watching the live stream because they're traveling, but they're watching the live stream for their generous um, support of this, of this event. So I wanna thank Ford and, and Karen. Also, just to acknowledge a few other VIPs in the room, we have Biddeford Mayor Marty Groman, Portland Mayor Mark Dion, U.S. District Judge Tim Black, um, and a no number of other VIPs. So thank you all very much for coming. And I'm also grateful, finally, to the UNE uh, uh, communications team, conference services, and our facilities team who helped put this together. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand it over to Courtney for the, the event, so thank you. <laughs> 